procedural SQL or PLSQL is a combination of SQL along with the procedural features of programming languages. And it was developed in the 90s by Oracle to enhance the capabilities of SQL. SQL slash PSM or SQL Persistent Stored Modules is a standard for procedural SQL that extends the core SQL standard. SQL slash PSM is implemented in many relational databases, but it has significant variations in different names. And many names incorporate the acronym PL instead, which stand for procedural language. A stored procedure is a prepared SQL code that you can store in the database so that the code can be reused and executed over and over again. And you can pass parameters to a stored procedure so that the stored procedure can act based on the parameter values that it that were passed to it. And you can call a stored procedure from a host program written in another language or on the command line. PSQL slash PSM is an ISO standard that defines an extension of SQL with a procedural language for use with in stored procedures. The create procedure keywords create a stored procedure. For example, you would say create procedure, procedure name, then you'd have parentheses with the parameters that you want to pass to it, followed by the body, and then you'll decide whether you have in, out, or in, out parameter names and, and a type. The body of a stored procedure typically contains SQL statements like select or delete. And to execute the code of a stored procedure, you call it by specifying its name and arguments. Arguments are the actual data that's passed to the parameters of a stored procedure Arguments can be literals, which are actual data values, or you can pass user-defined variables as arguments, but it must begin with the at character. That is the shift to on your keyboard. And you can call a stored procedure from a programming language like Java or Python, or on the command line, or from another stored procedure by using the call keyword. In a stored procedure, you'll have compound statements inside the body of it. This is where you can have a series of statements that start with begin and end with end keywords. Statements are commonly programming concepts like variables and assignments, branching or looping structures. For example, declare will declare some variables, set will set the variables to an expression or value. There is the if, else, if, else, which is a decision structure. And then while, which is just the looping structure. And to handle the result set inside a stored procedure, you use a cursor, which allows you to iterate a set of rows returned by the query's result set, and then process each row individually. A stored function is a special kind of function, similar to a stored procedure, but returns a single row. Stored procedures can return none, one, or more values. And typically, you use stored functions to encapsulate common formulas or business rules that are reusable among SQL statements or stored programs. They're pretty similar to SQL aggregate functions like sum, count, or average, but are created by the programmer and they use create function statements to create a stored function. Note that in a stored function, parameters are for input only and they don't use the in keywords like a stored procedure. They're also called by SQL and not by the call function. And after the returns keyword, you must have one of the listed keywords that describes the function, such as NoSQL for NoSQL statements in the function, read SQL data, which contains SQL statements that can only read table data, or deterministic, which contains SQL statements that can read table data. And a trigger is a named database object that encapsulates and defines a set of actions that are to be performed in response to an insert update or delete operation against the table. It has no parameters and no return value, and it cannot be called directly with the function call, like the call keyword. Triggers are created with the keywords create trigger. And similarly to stored procedures, the trigger body can be a simple or compound statement. Within the body, use the keyword old to prefix the table values prior to an update or delete operation, and then use the keyword new to prefix table values after an insert update operation. And if you look in the description of this video, I have examples of um, everything that I talked about so you can try them out yourself.